Today I will be reviewing Wes Anderson's 1998 film Rushmore. The story is essentially about a boy named Max Fisher who falls in love with a new teacher at Rushmore, the prep school at which Max has been put on academic probation. Max seeks advice on pursuing Miss Cross from his older companion Herman Bloom, but to his dismay Bloom ends up falling for Miss Cross as well. The two are then pitted against each other for her attention. On the cinematography side of things, Anderson uses long tracking shots and lateral camera movements that follow and draw attention to the main characters. The wide lens used on the camera allows a lot of information to be shown in every frame, incorporating many components of mise-en-scene. The types of shots shown in these clips can be referred to as tableau shots. This is distinguished by the way the actors are facing the camera almost as if they are in a photo. The blocking of the actors is symmetrical and balanced in relation to the framing. This is common among Anderson's other films, but for Rushmore in particular, the balance mirrors Max's punctuality and attention to detail. Max is usually centered in the middle of the frame, and this is how he sees himself, as the center of attention. Handheld and close-up shots are used a lot here, and in this example are used to make you feel empathetic. The handheld is most notably used when Max feels his relationship with Miss Cross is at stake, like when he's introduced to Peter Flynn. Peter Flynn, Max Fisher. Hi. Who's this guy? And even more so here when he confronts Miss Cross. This obviously creates Wait. a sense of uneasiness, and we can feel how Max feels when he's put in his place by her. The dim, bleak color palette comes into play when Max's world starts to fall apart. Max is arrogant at times and possesses all the qualities of an awkward teenager. He's wise beyond his years when he's in his element, such as directing a play. But as soon as he loses control, he reverts back to a childlike mindset. This makes his pursuit to get the girl a little more unusual because Herman Bloom is very similar to him in that sense. Bloom is an adult, but he also possesses immature personality traits that level the playing field for him and Max when it comes to getting the girl. Neither Max nor Herman will ever be with Miss Cross because of their immaturity. Max holds himself to a higher standard than Herman, though, and this is obvious because of the way he dresses. The students at Rushmore are seen wearing dress shirts, but Max is the only one wearing a fitted jacket, and he dresses as the person he wants to be. He lies about his background, telling Herman that his father is a neurosurgeon instead of a barber, and tells Miss Cross that Harvard is his safety school, when his grades would say the opposite. Max looks up to Herman because he seems to be rich and successful, but Herman is also unhappy with his life. They both have similar dry, comedic qualities to them that are also part of the mise-en-scene. I like your nurse's uniform, guy. These are OR scrubs. Oh, are they? Overall, the juxtaposition of the characters mirroring personalities and the organized camera work come together as Anderson's first contribution to his own collection of vibrant, aesthetic-driven films.